Right, now let's look at the comparing of the sorts. So, your bubble sort versus your insertion sort. You can see here the code is a bit longer. And as I've said before, it's really important to notice that code length is no indicator of efficiency whatsoever. So, got both of them have got a for loop, but as I say, the big difference is this while loop, which is a little bit longer, but is actually saving a lot of computational time. Now, this is where sort comparisons get a bit mean, because most of the time they quote the worst, and on paper, the bubble sort and the insertion sort are as bad as each other. But look at this best case scenario. In this best case scenario, the insertion sorts will beat bubble sorts by a long way. And that's why insertion sorts are more efficient. Note in the 9618 paper, you're going to learn a little bit more about computational efficiency. So it's worth knowing this if you're going forward with that particular paper. Right, let's have a quick look at the bubble sort versus insertion sort. Look here, something that was nearly sorted, it was really quick and efficient. Whereas now, they're roughly the same on some of the others. Right, so I've written a little program to show you what insertion sorts and bubble sorts are like in real life. So I'm just going to uh, start that program now. So I, I don't know how many of you know Python really well, but this is uh, using a very simple module called Tekinta and allows me to make lovely little GUIs. Um, and it's perfect for this because it allows me to just show you in real life what it's like. So what I'm going to do is create some random numbers and we're going to use some of the code that we're using in the lesson for this for the most part. I've added a few bits and pieces for timing and so on, but that's fine. So you can see there's some random numbers there. And let's first start with the bubble sort. Okay, and you see the bubble sort, it's done a good job. And with these small numbers, it really probably won't make any difference to you. When we look at it, it took the computer 280 microseconds to pull this off, which isn't very long, but like all teaching, we're teaching with small numbers, things that you can use and really get a handle on before we use bigger databases. I know that in some cases I've used things that would take hours if you use the wrong kind of sort. So that's 280 seconds with a bubble sort. Let's try it with an insertion sort. 121 microseconds. And so you can see it's taken about half the time on my laptop. Now this is not a particularly scientific test, this is, but generally speaking, in Python, on my laptop, it takes about half the time. Let's ramp that right up to something a little bit more. So this is 24 numbers. Okay, let's generate those numbers for us. You can see that's a lot more. Again, let's do it with a bubble sort. And you can see the number of swaps that are going on here. It's crazy. Um, yeah, 7,203 microseconds. That's a long time for a computer but you're doing a simple sort of 24 numbers. Let's do it with the insertion sort. Again, you can see the difference, 2,907 microseconds.